Graphic detail about the death of the beloved actor and comedian Robin Williams. While those details are difficult to hear, they have sparked an important conversation about the actor's struggles with addiction and depression and what many others can learn from it. Let's discuss all of this with psychologist Dr. Eric Fisher. Dr. Fisher, thanks so much. It's great to have you here. Thank you. So a lot of some of what we heard coming out yesterday, I mean we heard it in some say surprisingly graphic detail coming from the sheriff's office. I'm not going to get into further detail of it, but what, the way that Robin Williams was found, they talked about him even uh, the, some superficial cuts on his wrists, a pocket knife nearby. Does that tell you anything about his mental state, what he was going through at that moment? Because some have started to kind of read into this situation as he may have had a way out. Well, I think that we have to look at is this is obviously somebody that is experiencing a great deal of pain. What we don't know is if the knife there was there as a cutting behavior or as a suicide attempt that the knife wasn't sharp enough. Usually when people are cut cut as a behavior, they often cut crossways versus okay. long ways when somebody wants a suicide attempt. From his way that he hung him or asphyxiated himself by putting a belt in the closet, and you know, he did seem to have a way out there. It's possible he could have opened the door. So obviously this was a choice he made. He may have made this choice long ago. This obviously is not the first time he's, I, he's thought about suicide, and it might have just been a time where he just felt it was too much. And that's the difficult thing is knowing what is exactly in the mind of that individual just before they end their life. Well, I'm sure those that are close to him, those who are around him in the days prior have wondered this as well. But Robin Williams, he was very open about his struggles with addiction as well as depression, even adding it into some of his comedy routines, quite honestly. I mean, he right. spoke very publicly about it, which makes you wonder, could, should those close to him have seen this coming? There's no way, really, right? No, I mean, because there's, there's years and years of humor that he added to this. Like I said, people who in, in commit suicide in his manner and, and even through his own comedy routines in one of the interviews that there was a podcast he did that I heard that he had an inner dialogue about suicide and this voice he had, this discussion he had. So there's no way to know it. And the line from the, Will, the um, Good Will Hunting movie where he says to Matt Damon, it's not your fault. If there was ever a prophetic message that he could have given to his family, he gave it in that movie and he also seemed like the guy who had it under control if, if you can't completely ever put it aside or beat it he had it under control I mean even recently even in July checking himself into a treatment center which has a lot of people wondering how then do you explain this suicide well People, I always tell people control's an illusion. It's, it's not really a reality. We just see it as that. We manage situations moment to moment and day by day. Also, often people who commit suicide commit it coming out of a depression. That's when interesting. In the, Explain that. Well, when they're in the depths of depression, often there's such a level of hopelessness that they don't feel they can do anything right or complete anything. When they're coming out of a depression, they feel hope. And sometimes the fear is, I don't want to go back to that deep, dark place again, as well as they often can feel like they see things more clearly. This is what I need to do. But the key that I always tell people who want, who want to commit suicide or attempt suicide, as I said, suicide, is to tell them that you just want the pain to stop and you don't see any other way. So it's possible that they're definitely were other ways for that pain to stop. We know that. But for him, he didn't see another way. And as many bouts as he had with it, he might have felt like he was just done. And that's the hard thing to interpret is how he felt just before this happened. And another hard thing is that he is far from being the only person dealing with severe depression on a daily basis. What do you want the message to be when folks, this does draw the attention, the public eye to this situation like this? If someone is watching who has a loved one who's also facing severe depression, what do you want the message to be? For those people who have loved ones who face depression, make sure that you work to get them help as much as you can and make sure that they get the help they need. For those who have experienced depression and feeling suicidal, sometimes people see the success of somebody else's suicide as an opportunity to say, hey, I can do this now and I can be successful at it or I wanna be like this person. Don't see this as an opportunity to end your life. See it as an opportunity to live it more fully, get the help you need to, to, to recover and work through it. Know that it gets better with medication and therapy. Therapy is a key to getting better and working through this. And hopefully someone or many people will learn something good 
from the loss of someone who was so loved. Dr. Eric Fisher, thank you for your time. Thank you. Of course. Taking a break here. Coming up next on New Day, will they hug it out?